Hey folks, it's your main man Sabado. Uh, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you this is your first time, welcome to the channel. This is really a channel with the overall premise being it's never my expectation that everybody retires early. There's a lot of circumstances that have to fall into place in order for that to happen. But I do expect everybody to live their best life. And so what I try to do is share with you some of my experiences and my perspective, just so you can see what I'm doing, how I got there. And help you understand that getting to the place where you're living your best life is really a more attainable than we probably think it is. Um, I, again, I know that in order for us to retire, there's a lot of things that have to go right. And I know there's things that went right for me and there was a lot of planning that went on with it. But I had the good fortune of uh, retiring at 51. And so my way of giving back to people is just sharing my story. And it's it's all organic. It's, it's not overly rehearsed. And I try to do this in a way that makes sense to people. So, uh, so today... What I want to talk a little bit about is uh, my first year's vacations. You know, many of you probably realize if you've been to the channel before that I just celebrated my one year anniversary of my retirement date and it was great. And I had a bunch of plans of things that I thought I was going to do. And I had preconceived notions of what retirement was. And then I got into retirement and realized that retirement really isn't just all sitting in the lap of luxury and, and whining and dining every night, but it's just another stage of life where you have control of your time and you can do the things that you want to do. Um, so one of the things that my wife and I did do is we put together a bucket list. And if you're interested in that, let me know and I'll share it with you. Uh, but let me know in the comments. But what we try to do is every year try to do at least one thing from our bucket list, but that doesn't necessarily keep us from doing other stuff. And so I'm going to go through the six places that we went this year uh, and, and vacation. Uh, and again, I think some of these may surprise you because they're not big, grandiose trips, but they're just trips to decompress, spend time together, whether it's with her or with friends. Um, some of the trips we went on together and some we went on with friends. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first trip we took was a trip to the Panama Canal. One of the places I always thought was interesting, I, I think it's the eighth wonder of the world or the ninth wonder of the world. It's one of the wonders of the world. But the Panama Canal sits in the country of Panama and separates the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. And what most people don't know, and I didn't know this when I went, is that the Panama, the Pacific Ocean is actually in higher elevation than the Atlantic Ocean. So it's not like ships can just go through and flow through, but there's a whole series of locks that are man-made that connect the two oceans. So we had the opportunity to take a cruise on Princess Cruises and went to the Panama Canal. We didn't go through the full Panama Canal because it would have been 19 days to get all the way from, let's say, San Francisco to Florida. But we started in uh, Fort Lauderdale, went down, had a couple of stops, went into one of the locks, saw that whole process, which was fascinating. And then turned around inside of, uh, there's a lake in there, Guatong Lake or something like that, and then turned around and went through the locks again. And it's it's funny because when you think about the Panama Canal, you think of all of this excitement and you think there's going to be all these things that are going on. But you're really when you're going uh, west, you're sitting inside of what looks like a big tub in a cruise ship and you're just lifting up and then you go into the lake and you come out. But one of the funny things that happened on our way back out of the locks is some friends of ours that we met. We were sitting and having lunch with them inside of the. Uh, plaza or the, the little plaza in the middle of the cruise ship, whatever it's called. And if you remember, let me know. We were sitting there having lunch. And when I looked outside, I saw a wall. It looked like a big wall and it was the side of the lock. And so we were just sitting, having lunch, talking. Um, There's two couples, my wife and I and, and those two. And then I looked out of the window about half an hour later and what was at one time just wall, we were at the top of it getting ready to go out. So it was incredibly fascinating. So I would recommend that you do take a trip to the Panama Canal if that's something that's interesting to you. It's worth it. But if you do it, get a balcony room so you're not dealing with being on some deck with a thousand year closest friends trying to get a good seat. And one of the other videos I talk about is I have a phenomenal way, an easy way to get discount, um, a, a minimum of a 10% discount on your entire trip using a gift card through the AARP. So if you have questions about that, let me know in the comments and I'll respond to you in the comments and let you know how we did it. And so for the low cost of 12, I think it's $12 a year or something like that, you get the AARP membership, then you can get the gift card 
and it's 10% off. And you can use that to pay for your cruise and you can also use it for your onboard expenses. And so we gambled there, spent a bunch of money gambling, but because we use gift cards and we bought gift cards while we were on the ship as well, we got a 10% discount. So we made 10%. Uh, the next trip we took was an RV trip. And you'll see that we've taken a few RV trips, but the first one we took was to a place called Cassini Ranch. So Cassini Ranch, for anybody that's uh, that knows anything about Northern California, Cassini Ranch sits in Northern California, and it's going out towards the coast from Santa Rosa, but it's at the end of the towards the end of the American River. So it's this great place, and what's beautiful is is when we went, it was right after a bunch of torrential rains, and we went during the week. So we got there on a Sunday left on a Friday, and I think it was right before the Super Bowl or right around the Super Bowl. So when we were leaving, a bunch of people were coming in, but it was really a campground that we had to ourselves. It was beautiful. They have horses out there. We're right on the American River. You could walk to the American River. Uh, the cable wasn't working the first few days that we got there, so we didn't have cable because, again, in an RV, I know people are going to say that's glamping. And if you want to call it glamping, call it what you want, but we were loving it. Uh, but there's just it was just open space for us to hang out, walk around. It wasn't too hot, and it's just just a beautiful place. Um, the American River is is phenomenal, and you can do you can go fishing out there. They have in the summertime they have a bunch of stuff for the kids, uh, which is really what was interesting for us because we like uh, campgrounds that have a lot of things to do. So they either have to have things to do, or they have to have um, a casino. I mean, it's it's really kind of what it comes down to. Um, and they have a great camp store. So it was a great trip. We went for a whole week, came back, and it wasn't too busy. And when we were leaving, uh, then we saw all the people coming. And so we realized that, you know, this retirement thing is actually pretty good because we don't have to deal with all the rushes with people coming into these campgrounds and not being able to get space and, and so on. Uh, then the next trip that I took, and I took this trip with my best friend, actually three of my close friends, but... One of them being my best friend, and I think you may have seen the videos on this uh, earlier, is went deep sea fishing out in Galveston. Galveston, for those of you that don't know, is a coastal town down in the Gulf of Mexico. And as much as I've been to Texas and as much as I've been to the south, I've never been to the Gulf of Mexico. So I thought it would be interesting just to go out to the Gulf of Mexico. Funny thing is, we got there, and normally it's hot, it's humid, and I think we went in April, if I don't if I'm not mistaken, and it's usually starting to get hot and humid, but unfortunately, this was right before, maybe two weeks before all of that major flooding happened, so our timing was phenomenal, but we got out there, and it was nice because we were able to do some fishing. We caught a bunch of fish, but we didn't have to deal with all the brutal heat. Galveston is a great town. It's got a lot of shops and restaurants and bars, and you could just hang out, walk around, and we had an Airbnb right on the main street. After we fished, um, those of you that don't know, and, and I know I'll probably get some flack for this, so uh, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm, I'm, I've got a tough, I got a tough skin, is I don't eat fish. And so whenever I go fishing with my buddies, they love it because I don't eat the fish. I just catch them and I give them to them. And so what we were able to do out there is we caught a bunch of fish. And I mean, we caught a whole bunch of fish, but we could, took that fish to one of the local restaurants and they cooked it for us for a small fee. It's like if you drink wine and you go to a restaurant with your own bottle, you pay a corkage fee. Well, think of a corkage fee for cooking your own cooking the fish that you bring with you. And so we were able to take the fish there. They cooked it up and they were able to eat the fish. And so this is fresh fish right out of the ocean. Um, and I'm trying to think of what kind of fish we caught. And if you're familiar with the types of fish, if you leave in the comments what kind of fish uh, you think they have out there, I could let you know because if I if I really thought about it, I could remember. But I know that we did not eat the catfish that we caught out there in the ocean. But we ate a whole bunch of other fish, and it was it was just a phenomenal trip. We went from a Thursday to a Mon uh, Thursday to a Monday, and we flew into Houston. And it was cool because even when we got to Houston on the way back, we dropped one of my buddies off because he had an earlier flight. Then we went and caught a movie in downtown Houston and just hung out in, in downtown Houston, which was Thursday through Sunday. I'm sorry. So there weren't a lot of people there. We walked around Houston and Houston is a great city, has a great downtown. So that was that was fun. And it was 
a really short trip. So you can look at some of my past uh, content or if you have questions about that, let me know. And if you have questions about any of these locations or you're interested in perhaps going to any of these locations, let me know and I'll let you know exactly in the comments how we how we did that. Uh, the next one was a road trip to Southern California. We uh, went down to Temecula. There's a nice casino down in Temecula. And I think I mentioned, in, again, in, in earlier content, that my niece graduated from college. So she graduated from Cal State San Marcos. And we uh, went down there to go to the graduation. And she had a party afterwards. So it was, it was phenomenal. Uh, my niece just graduated from college. She's been through some... It was some challenges. She has a, a young child, and she, you know, it was really important to me and to the rest of the family that she graduated. So we went and we hung out. So we, again, it was another short trip. We left on a Thursday, and we we came back. And I, again, I, I'm at a loss now because we actually stayed at a casino down there, and it was a smoke free casino. And so whenever you have a smoke free casino, and if you know of any smoke free casinos, please let us know because we like to go to the casinos but we hate the smoke. I don't want to smell like the casino two days later. It gets all in my hair and stuff. Just kidding. But I don't like smelling like a casino for three days. And so this casino was a smoke-free casino. And it starts with a P, and I just can't think of the name. And I would hate for all of you out there that might be looking for casinos to, to have the wrong name and go to Temecula and not know the name of the casino. But again, we weren't there for the casino. That just happened to be where we stayed, but we had the pleasure or the honor of being at my niece's graduation. And so we had a, a few days there. Then we had, uh, not long after that, um, or maybe in between again, because these can't be in order because I can't just, I just can't recall them in, in their specific order. Um, but I went with another group of guys to Lake Comanche. We took the RV. Um, a buddy of mine that I met years ago also has an RV, so he drove his RV up. And then another buddy of mine, we he came with me, and we drove my RV to Lake Comanche, and we did some trout fishing. The beauty of these trout is Lake Comanche is this huge lake. It's actually, I venture to say that it's a watershed. So California has a bunch of these watersheds where they store water that comes down from the Sierras so we don't find ourselves in drought conditions. Well, Lake Comanche is one of those, but what they have is they have what they call a trout pond. Now, if you think about a normal pond, a normal pond probably will fit inside of your front yard, but this is a huge, huge, huge lake that's stocked with trout. But ironically, a lot of the trout don't get caught, and so they continue to spawn there, and it's just an incredible amount of fish, but you get these huge, huge 16, 18-inch trout. And there's people out there with kayaks that come out for the day. And along the bank, there's campsites. And so what we were able to do is back our RV up to one. Of, we were able to reserve and then back our RV up right to one of those campsites and go out fishing. So we were able to morning fish, night fish, afternoon fish, and just fish all day. And I am happy to say that I was the fishing captain for that day. I caught more fish than anybody. So again, we went on a Thursday, and you'll notice a trend that a lot of these trips are Thursday through Sunday, and that's because when you're retired, even though I have all of the time in the world, the reality is everybody else is still working. And so I find myself, if I want to spend time with people that are close to me, I find myself in a situation where I have to uh, go on their schedule, which is totally fine, because for me, I'm not rushed on the front end. And I'm not rushed on the back end. I just want to make it there. And if I make it there, when I get back is when I get back. But I caught some 18-inch trout. And it was that was a weekend that, and this is just the weather in California sometimes, is that we got there and it was hot. It was hotter than Hades. Then the second day, it was cold. And so it was rainy, it was cold, and I think... You may, if you look on, look back at some of my shorts, it's funny, I hate saying shorts because I feel like my shorts, but my short form videos, I talk about camping in the rain and it was in, it was raining behind me and I was kind of bundled up, but it was, it was great because then we just got to hang out, have some fellowship, relax, and just have some fun and talk. 
And then the next day we caught a few more fish. So it was just a great overall trip. Um, it's, it's time to get away with, with a couple of friends. And I did that a couple of times this year. And then the last trip that I took was the trip to Reno. Uh, my wife and I took a day trip uh, to Reno every other week. We have somebody that comes in and does some stuff at our house for us. And so what we do is that's a time where every other week we have on the schedule that we spend time together. And so one day I decided to surprise her and said, you know, let's take a ride to Reno so we can drive through to Sierra Nevada from where we live. And it's only about two and a half hours. And we drove out to Reno, the biggest little city on earth. And we went gambling and gambled for the afternoon and then turned around and drove right back. So it was it was just a great afternoon. And we didn't win a bunch of money. And when we go to a casino, we don't spend a bunch and we don't win a bunch. But we have fun and we're spending time together. And we never spend more than we can afford to lose. And sometimes we come back with more than we left with. But in this one, it was beautiful because when you go over the Sierra Passes, when it's snowing, that's one scene that it's incredible to look at. But when we went on this trip, it was in the summertime. And it's cooler up there. But it's just green, lush, great views and and scapes, and and it was just incredible. And it's relaxing. I don't mind driving. I've always liked driving. So we just drive, talk, and and enjoy just being together. And so that's that's really the wrap up of my vacations through the through my first year of retirement. And coming up, I have a, a cruise to. Alaska, which is another bucket list cruise. I'm looking at a couple of trips. Um, perhaps uh, some friends of mine and I are looking at maybe going to an Indy car race. Uh, I was thinking of maybe the Indy 500 or something like that. But then we started talking about Formula One because it's just stuff that we wouldn't have maybe done normally or maybe I wouldn't have done normally because I had so little time that I wanted to try to get the most bang for my buck. But now I'm just looking at the world around me and trying to figure out stuff that I haven't done that I'd like to do. So if there are ideas that you have of things that maybe based on what you know about me from my videos that you think I might enjoy or that are outside of something I've ever done, let me know. I, and I'll probably go. And I, if I do go, I I promise you, I will write some content about that, or at least uh, give you some content about that to talk about it. So on that note, I think I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Um, Again, if you're, if you like the channel, you know, feel free to subscribe. I, if, if you do, I think that's great. Um, but the premise of this channel, and it will always be, is that I can't expect everybody to retire early, but I can expect you to live your best life. And my goal is to just provide some insight, perspective, and share some of my experience and hope that it inspires you to really go after the things you want to do. Or if nothing else, you have a friend you can ask a question to. And I'm always going to ask, you know, as I say, if I care enough about you to answer the question, it's always going to be the truth. And I'll always give you the truth that I'm an open book and look forward to speaking to you in the future. So on that note, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.